As everyone knows, we at the Designated Drinker Show are dedicated to raising the bar on craft cocktails. And now, now we need your help and just a little bit of your time. We'd love to hear what you think of the show and to find out what you want more of and even what you don't. So please head over to designateddrinker.show to complete our listener survey because what you, our loyal listeners, want is exactly what we aim to deliver. I promise it will only take a few minutes of your time to complete the survey and for doing so, you'll receive an exclusive invite to our Let's Get Twisted Cocktail Hour, a live online interactive event with me and Gina. We'll be serving up some fun times as we try to answer your questions, deal out a few fun cocktail facts, and of course, share some good laughs. All while Gina doles out her tips and tricks as she shows us how to craft three, yes, three amazing cocktails. So head over to designateddrinker.show, dish out your thoughts, and we'll see you at the Let's Get Twisted Cocktail Hour. The date and time will be determined by survey participation, so go do it today. And hell, share with your friends, family, clergy, postal worker, dog walker, I don't know, anyone you know who appreciates a tasty cocktail and some intoxicating boozy banter. You know we can't wait to hear from you. Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I am your host, Louise Solace, and with me is my very, very talented friend, who is definitely the master of many ceremonies, the mixtress DC Gina. Hey, Louise, what's going on? Well, yeah, just hanging out, doing our thing yeah. here in Last Call. Oh, yeah. We're always doing this one particular thing here in Last Call, that's for sure. <laughs> I like the lineup today, but I won't give it away just yet. Not yet, not yet. So let me ask you this question. Minus our ever-growing little society of designated drinkers, are you a member of any formal club? I mean, yeah, but like they're professional clubs. Yeah. So let me tell you this. So if you're yeah. looking to join a club and uh, that might be you know, filled with unique people who, like you, have unique interests and like to spend their time with u- uniquely like-minded people. That was easy to say. Um, there are a lot of clubs out there. Yeah. They're always looking for members. And here's a few you might want to note. So if you love ironing, yes, ironing your clothes, as much as you enjoy extreme sports, then uh, you should join the Extreme Ironing Bureau. Yes where they combine their two passions of ironing and extreme sports. They're very tidy adventurers, apparently. That's your love. If not, maybe, well, maybe you're a scientist. If you're a scientist with lovely locks, just flowing locks of beautiful hair, then the luxuriant flowing hair club for scientists might be right for you. No? Not yet. I, get, I get where that's coming from, just so you know. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the like all the um, the people I knew at the University of Maryland that went to like the three specific science schools. They all had very long hair. Really? I feel like they had no reason to cut it. Maybe. You know. <laughs> Keep going. I like everything's happening. Okay. So. Did Da Vinci have hair? I don't even know. He did. <laughs> I, he did. He wore his hair up in a bun. I feel like they felt if they cut their hair, they would lose some of their smarts. Maybe. It's a thing. I, I, maybe I Einstein. Wanna, maybe that's why. I don't know. No, he didn't. He cut his but hair. But his hair was kind of crazy. Anyway, so speaking of heads, and you, if you often find yours in the clouds, get yours out of the gutter. The Cloud Appreciation Society might be where you belong. Yeah, they get together and just look at clouds. They have I, great appreciation for that. I got a bunch of uh, three-year-olds that want to do that, too. That's <laughs> all. Can, they, can I drop them off? Do you guys babysit? You should call them. I don't know. Um, and now, if your happy place is found at Logan DuPont or maybe Memorial Circle, then the UK Roundabout Appreciation Society um, might be for you because they there they uh, they pro- they proudly proclaim the humble circular intersection as an oasis on a sea of tarmac. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It, I, it just seems that that. It, but hey, I'm not judging. Whatever your thing is, if it's the. O- you could join my club. Which? Uh, the Foul Chicks Cocktail Club. There you, you go. Have to like chickens and cocktails. There you go. <laughs> it's very, it's very Love fun. It. Love it. Yeah, it gives me both my joys to get totally drunk and play with the chickens. And you have new and, chickens, from what I, I understand. I'm going to be getting new chickens, yes, yes. All and right. My chickens are being eaten very quickly <laughs> this winter. Not but, by me, yeah, it was by, by the hawk. By the hawk. So, but speaking of that. Yes, we're not speaking, speaking about Speaking of the wilderness. <laughs> So after you meet today's designated drinker, you 
might just want to join the Society of Happy People. Because with us today is my friend, the co-founder of the Commonwealth Whiskey Alliance, and he has brought us some treats, so we will be happy. He is Brian Muller. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thanks so much for having me. Great to see you all. Yeah. Hi, Brian. I've known Brian for a long time. Yes. He's like one of the original uh, people I met in D.C. going through, speaking of clubs, we met in AAF, which it then was the ad club, yep. and we met at, uh, at advertising Get togethers. I thought you, I thought you met him like in a club, like you were dancing. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, no. like, do you want to see my cabbage patch kid pull into it? <laughs> no, it's a good story, but it's not that good. No, I wish. I wish it had been that cloud club. That sounds fun. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I'm like totally into. I'm really into the lineup, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, so sorry. so let's get into that. But tell me, Brian, what? And I, I'm gonna, I'm calling, I'm gonna call it Siwa. Siwa, okay. Yeah. Siwa. CWA. Like Siwa. Siwa. What started all this? Yeah, great question. So I had moved out to Loudoun County from Arlington, so a little bit further, and trying to make some new friends. And no joke, was on Reddit, and a guy was like, hey, I'm going to have a whiskey bottle share in my basement in like two weeks. So you're like, all right, go into somebody's basement that <laughs> I've never met on Reddit. My wife was admittedly a little bit concerned. She was like, text me when you get there. Text me when you leave. <laughs> All this. Uh, but so it's just a bunch of people brought over bottles of whiskey that are a little bit harder to find. Just everybody would taste a little, share some samples, and, and just had a good time. And that really, out of that came a core group of about eight of us that were like, you know, you'll, you'll go to stores or bars and they'll have their own special pick. Like they went out and picked a barrel of whiskey, brought it back to then share with their customers, um, whether it be a bar or retailer. And we're like, well, I mean, that sounds really fun. Is there a way we could do this? So we started researching it, uh, reaching out to different distilleries and found a couple that you know, were willing to host us and have us. So we kind of created this loose group called Commonwealth Whiskey Alliance, invited a bunch of our friends. Loose and, group, huh? Yeah, loose Sounds group. like our kind of group. Yes, yes, very, <laughs> very loose. Yeah, we try not to take it too seriously. You know, there's a lot of people in whiskey that are like very particular. You know, we just want to have fun with it um, and do some nice things for the community. Cool. Cool. So, I'm going to translate this for all of our listeners. Brian and his friends put about $20,000 in a pot. <laughs> they all go to Kentucky. They get super fucked up. <laughs> they pick out a barrel they all like. They box, they barrel, they case about, I don't know, 16 to 24 cases, whatever comes out of that mm -hmm. barrel because of the angel share. Yep. And they come home. And they don't tell their wives what they just did. That's what this group is. So now. Pretty close. Yes. So yes. I'm 100% in to what you do. Yes. So I'll translate it back to the bar owners. You run the bar. You don't tell the owner. I'm going to go to Kentucky. I'm going to spend $20,000. But you don't know that yet because you're the owner and you think they're just going on a trip. They come back. Look, we put our logo on a barrel. The owner gets all excited because the logo's on a barrel. And then in the next P&L, you see how much it costs that trip. And you're like... God damn it, but then everybody loves the whiskey. So then, the barrel club. Yeah. And sometimes they'll born. even give you the whole barrel, so you might have a whole I got like, one right there. decoration. There you there go. You go. Oh, got nice. one right there. Perfect. Now, I love that you did this on a friend level. I don't have enough friends that I want to share my whiskey with. Yeah. I mean, it's. it's I have acquaintances. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we've tried to keep it tight. So there's like the original eight of us, and then everybody kind of invited five to six. So we got about 60 people it's in, the, in yeah. the organization. We've tried to do some parties when we first get our barrel in. So we did like a picnic with the family. So we eventually do tell the wives what we have done. Um, and then we've got one coming up. And then the other thing we like to do is in order to like really spread the love, you know, add a couple dollars to each of um, the bottles and then raise money for charity. So our oh, first cool. one, we did a donation to Children's Medical and this uh, next set we have coming up, we're doing it to Loud and Hunger Relief ahead of the holidays so more people can get some food. Oh, that's awesome. Now, Brian, I'd like to share with you that I live down the road from you on 15 in Middletown, Maryland, so right over the bridge. So, right, so you're, you said you're in Loudoun County? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I want to join your club. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm totally into we this. We have saved a spot for you. I, I love will, when my friends become friends. <laughs> I will hide it in my basement in my barn. Yes. That I'm going to dig out now. I don't have a basement yet. I'm going to no. do it now. Would you have to keep it in the basement? Would you? Could you not put it in the milk barn? Would you um, maybe. Um, I don't know. Well, no. 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 So... Is it temperature? Well, I, have, I, have I feel like there's something fun we could do with like the stickers and your chickens. So. Well, I have a question for you. <laughs> yes. So, so you're barreling this. You obviously pick the juice. You love the juice. Mm -hmm. And then how many are you holding? And then what are you drinking? 
So, I mean, we have it basically set up so that each member is committed to do two. If you go on the pick, you can buy like six or eight. Um, so, you know, a lot of people that have gone on the picks get a couple extras to give as gifts around the holiday season because it's just like single barrel whiskey just tends to be a great holiday gift. Did yes. you, um, did you ready score? Have you, do you privately score your own bottles in your club? So we have a couple guys that are much, I'm more of a, okay, do I like this or do I not? And maybe, you know, That's finish for me is, is important, knows. But I mean, we have guys that will go through and intricately write notes of, you know, cardamom spice and dark chocolate. Definitely not, de definitely not milk chocolate. This is a dark chocolate. So everybody kind of has their own ways that they go through it. So when we're doing the tasting, like let's say at um, one, we got four different samples. Everybody does it completely blind. I mean, we know the four samples, right? Everybody writes down what they think, what they like, but don't talk about it until everybody's had everything. And then we discuss and we've got this overly complicated voting system, but it, uh, somebody will write up the notes and all that that we kind of then pass along to people. What is the voting system? I need to know. Or is this a secret? You need to be part of the club. No, and it, it's one of those <laughs> things that we, we, we practiced several times before we went out to Kentucky. So everybody would bring maybe like a Four Roses pick and we would kind of do that and then figure out, okay, this is how we wanted to work. So, you know, for the one where we had eight of us on the pick and there were four samples, we actually had a tie. So it's four and four. But that morning before, while we're eating our egg sandwiches and getting ready, we had come up with, okay, these three are the tiebreakers. So we knew that you couldn't have an ultimate tie. So then we kind of gave these three people extra voting rights and that's how we decided it. But it's one of those ones where like, usually it's pretty apparent if, even if you're trying like eight different things, here's like the top two and everybody can kind of agree on that, but everybody has their own different things that they want. Somebody might want something like darker and richer, and maybe I'm a little bit more of a fan of like fruity notes. So, you know, it's one of those things where you just kind of know throughout time, everybody's going to get one that's exactly their pick, but you kind of trust the people that you're going with to come back with something that people are going to enjoy. That's uh, awesome. I Speaking love, of. I love that. Yeah. Let's, what are we going to try? All right. So first up we have uh, from our recent trip to Starlight. So Starlight's actually in Indiana, about an hour north of Louisville beautiful place, like this farm. They took us around on their ATVs and everything. Um, and they have, it's a winery and, and farm, as I mentioned, but they've recently gotten into distilling. And so what we have here is a double oaked bourbon. So it's, I think, about a four-year bourbon that then they put in French oak for another six months. Ooh. So it's going to have like a, a, what I find to be like a rich oh, kind of finish on the back end. Cheers. So cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. Oh, what is the, what's the proof on that one? So this is, I think, 116.4. Yeah. Yes. So let's give you a little, uh, little bit of advice, everybody that is trying overproof whiskey for the first time in your life. You're going to take a little, a little sip of it, and you are going to put the tiniest little sip, and I usually recommend when you have something that high proof, spitting it out. I didn't realize what it was. Um, <laughs> spitting out the first one, and then you'll go back because your mouth is now welling up, and you really can't taste anything except the alcohol. It's not until you start blowing it off. It's like basically off your palate. And then you'll go back and nose the now the spirit. Because now is the only time you'll be able to start to smell what the spirit actually smells like. I've never met anybody that could put 116 proof in their mouth and get the notes because like you're out of your mind. One thing that's nice too about the overproofed ones is you can kind of make it your own, right? So you can then add a little bit of water or if you're going to put it on an ice cube, it'll, it'll melt slowly and then you'll kind of figure out, okay, this is where... I like that. But yeah, everything we've done Where so far green? has been high proof picks. Talk to me about the greens for the star, uh, for Starlight. Yes. How did you find these people? Let's so interestingly enough, I mean, whiskey social media has gotten really big. Yeah. Um, so Starlight, I think, has really made a name for themselves on doing some of these picks. So you'll start to see in whiskey groups, oh, we have a different Starlight rye or this double oak. They have something they call the cigar blend that's supposed to match perfectly with a cigar. Um, so you'll see other groups are doing picks, um, and then that kind of led us to them. Um, like I said, they're about an hour May north I? of Louisville. Talk to me about their, they don't, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's this the one duck I Duck Hunter. Yeah. This is Duck Hunt. Yeah, yeah, so what we like to do is kind of put a unique brand, our own is little. Is this Duck Hunt the game? The it is. Game? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so this one, because it was double barreled, so then that made us think about like a double barrel shotgun, which somehow then took us to Duck Hunt for Nintendo, and there we are. Tell me, um, where do they get their, their wheat from? Like where are they get in their corn and, and wheat? So I know they grow all of their own rye on premise, apparently grows like a weed. Um, they said they tried to do wheat um, on, on like their own farm, but weren't able to, but I think they do the barley on their own farm as well. 
It's the oak. It's the crazy. It's the oak. Is this is crazy? This is yeah. like my, my mouth. I can't decide where I'm. Where I'm. You know what this tastes like to me? I'll say exactly what it is. It is when you get a bottle of really tight, like um, uh, like a Merlot, like a like a really tight, like like a Rothschild, right? Like you're open up a Rothschild Merlot, right? Mm-hmm. And you like die because it's like tastes like some sort of chalkiness to it, but it needs the time because the French oak is so tight. That's it's, an interesting. It's, it's insane what it's doing to this. Mm-hmm. And again, um, it wasn't in that French oak for very long. It's so tight. It's like. I, I got to stop saying that because I'm, I'm saying, I'm just, keep saying, <laughs> <laughs> woo, can't say that. I need a little, I need a touch of water. Oh, I needed a hit of, I needed a hit of water. It softens right up. It's very mm-hmm. beautiful. Cardamom, now you get all the, the, the nice spices in there. Oh my God, it's so tight. Sorry, I feel bad. I should have warned you. What? No, you did not, <laughs> not warn me. I just... You know, I, t- I just taste, um, you know, everyone tastes differently. You've mm-hmm. known that now you're in a club, right? So that is, it's really lovely. The French oak is crazy. Crazy what that does to that. But I do love that you do the overproving because it is make it your own. Mm-hmm. Also, there's no water down. And, and I think it's more bang for your buck, yes, right? Yes, for sure. Because, like, I'm not going to pay you to put water in a bottle. Because, mm-hmm. like, it comes oh, off. Yeah. Yeah, well, it comes off the still, it, you know, still proof, right? Or there's some people call it barrel proof, whatever. Wherever the, the, the stiller has decided to cut it, and then they barrel it, and then, like, that's, you know, that's where the, the prime of the, the, the product is. And then they add water to the bottle, right? So you might have something. This is 116, right? Think about yeah. how much money can be made, how many more bottles they can make if they make it to 80 proof. Gotcha, because you're adding water, basically. Mm-hmm. Diluting L- it. Literally, yeah. straight water. They like, do the same thing with like fruit and when they're doing wine in like Lodi in California or anywhere really. They're like, oh, because it's illegal to do it in Europe. You can't do it in Europe. Mm. You have to use straight, they have to use straight, um, straight juice from the grapes and stuff like that, right? But here in the United States, it is legal to add water to your wine. Oh. But people in the United States love it because they're like, oh my God, my peanut butter is so juicy. Yeah. <laughs> it's got five gallons of water. <laughs> and you're like, I love this. And then and people in, in Cal- and, uh, you know, Oregon are like, yes, they love the water and the wine. Let's yep. keep going. Anyway, I think that's very lovely. Whose pick was that? Uh, so that was, <laughs> the whole experience at Starlight was a little bit crazy. They take you actually into their Rick House. People, some people call it Rack House, Rick House. I still don't know what's right. It's a Rick House. Okay. Let's Rick go or with- Rack? Rick. Rick. Yes, okay. I understand. So Ricks are what the barrels yeah, sit on, right? 100% they are racked, but okay. it is a Rick house. You mm-hmm. are correct. Yeah. Oh. Um, so this guy, Andrew, who's their barrel pick manager, literally just starts climbing up these things with a thief yeah. and pulling out whiskey and then pouring them into our little glasses. And so we take the first one. He's like, all right, what's everybody think about this? So we kind of like, oh, you know, maybe this is a little too hot, like a little, we don't like the nose. He goes, okay, then he goes over here to like another one. So we went through and did that for- Is he just like climbing around like a little monkey on all these things? That's what's in my head. (laughs) Yes, no, that's 100% accurate. He's not even little, he's like a pretty big dude. So he's like, you know, not King Kong big, but yes, 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 yes. scaling these barrels and we're all like, okay, this is is going great. Um, So probably like four, five, six bourbons. So then we did that and then same idea with rise. And so four, five, six of those. Okay, then we've kind of like narrowed it down to maybe our top of each. And then we ended up with one double oaked uh, rye and then one double oaked bourbon. After, you know, a good amount of trying things, time yeah. to take a little break. Uh, so we go up, have a little lunch, some pizza, mushrooms, that kind of stuff, try to cleanse the palate, and then narrowed it down based on what we had brought with us. You know, those two, 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 two ryes, two bourbons, two doubles. And then from there, went through, again, we did the whole no talking thing. And then basically like, he said, okay, who likes this? And everybody raised their hand. And that's how we came back with what we came back with. Wow. That's so cool. I love it. Yeah. So should we try the rye? Let's do it. All right. Yep. (laughs) All right, so Gina, this one's a little bit lower. This is at, you know, 114 proof. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I took a nap today. And then what I find with rye, so, I mean, the different recipes, right? So in order to be a rye, it just has to be 51% or more of a rye grain. Uh, the rye out of Indiana tend to be a higher percentage of rye. So I personally like a really spicy, minty rye. But if you get one that's like 51%, it's going to taste like more like a bourbon. So as people are trying to figure out what they like, 
helps to know kind of what the grain ingredient recipes are that go into each of these. So should I do the same, taste this the same way since I've already opened yeah. it up? Yeah. Take a little sip. Yeah. This has a bubblegum flavor to it. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And that just kind of burns it all off, right? <laughs> yeah. Opens it up. Yeah. Okay. I think the other thing to do is, you know, obviously if you are going to be consuming some of these, sometimes it's good to pour them maybe 30 minutes before you want to try it just to let a little bit of that alcohol kind of burn off. Um, as Gina said, you kind of like waft it, try it, go back to it. This has a gummy, bubble gummy, bubble yum, like traditional flavor to me. I don't know. It's kind like of a cool. traditional rye or? Like, no, bubble. You know, like bubble gum has like that rye can have a bubble gum notes to it. Mm-hmm. Like that's to me what it, it almost like, it's like bubble yum. In a good way, in yeah. a good way. It's not and a, I'm tasting, that's coming to me like further back. Is that where that's supposed to be? I think that's probably the rye spice kind of is coming through the back side, yeah. This is, this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna do something, it's a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah. You once asked me to do it and I was just financially not in a spot to do it at the time. I wanted to buy a barrel for a designated drinker show yeah. and this and like people could buy their designated bottle, mm-hmm. you know? But um, we just gotta get to a financial. That was spot. a little, yeah. We can do that. <laughs> that was I was invited to buy barrels from, and I still am for Buffalo Trace, which mm, most people yeah. are not allowed to do. No, not even close. Yeah. You have to like win a lottery just to get invited. Yeah, so I got invited to do something, but like I was like, uh, I don't have any. I have no more storage in any of my store, any of my places anymore to do it. So it'd have to be something we did and sold. Mm-hmm. But. Buffalo Trace is becoming so expensive that I'm like, maybe I'll just hold it all and be like, oh, we want a bottle of it. Because you can't get it. Yeah, I mean. You cannot get it. It's crazy. Flies off the shelf in Talk Virginia. To me it's just a, never there. Do you think that clubs like yourselves are driving the prices of all of, and the scarcity of whiskey because of this? I think it's twofold. I think clubs like ours are honestly a little bit of a rebuttal to the difficulty of getting limited releases, right? So Buffalo Trace's antique collection. Unless you're willing to camp out, win a lottery, or pay a lot of money, it, it's very hard to get that kind of thing. So I think what we saw was, here's a unique thing that we can do together, help spread the love among our friends, raise a little money for charity. And yeah, so now you know, you're know you not camping out to get Van Winkle 15. I mean, granted, if you could find that, sure, but this is kind of an alternative to it instead of trying to take the market and, it, you know, cash in on it. There are obviously groups doing that that are, you know, getting something that's $50 and then charging 75 for it and, and taking that money. Our group is about making zero profit and then just having a little fun with the stickers and then the charity donations. Um, and I love that. I think that's yeah. great. Um, also, to talk about that antique, uh, that is, I, I heard, I was, I'm getting a sample of each one because they reached out to our show. And I forwarded the e- I forwarded you the email. I want the antique. I want to try the antique with the with the distiller. So mm-hmm. it's supposed to be like exceptional. Now yes. I haven't tried it. No mm-hmm. one's tried it. You know what I mean. So you telling me it's exceptional sounds great. But like, is it awesome? Let me know. You know. Any anyway, I Can totally he- agree with you about like the you know camping out now and all of it and the lotteries. The Montgomery County lottery. Yep. Like that's insane. Mm-hmm. So we're here in Washington D.C. If you're listening to the show. And uh, Montgomery County is a county in Maryland. Uh, and once a year, they put all their high-end bottles in a lottery. But you have to live in the state of Maryland, I believe, right? So I, theirs is, com- I, all of them are complicated. But yeah, from what I understand, maybe Montgomery County has something called Whiskey Rocks, where half of them are for Montgomery only, then a, maybe a quarter are for Maryland only, and then a quarter people can come from out of state. Got it. Doesn't Virginia do the same? So Virginia, they they change things depending on their whims. Well, so Virginia. actually, next week they are doing something where they're releasing a bunch of bottles on a Saturday morning, and people will go line up and first come, first serve. Sometimes they will do an online lottery, and sometimes things will just show up on shelves. I think that's what I've seen is um, on my in my emails from going, I'm sure from the ABC stores. Yes, um, I it came up. I've had lotteries come through, and I was like, oh, and I didn't know that it was a thing, even though I live in Virginia. I hadn't. I didn't know. Obviously, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, I didn't know if that was an ongoing thing or it was just because I started buying more from the ABC store. Because before that, I would buy on base, 
because mm. you're buying straight. You're not buying from the ABC stores. It's yep. Do you a get cheaper. any of this on base? Yeah, it depends on which base you. It depends on what base you're on, and now when, we're and, about and now when you, when you're close to the Pentagon and this much brass, there's some really great prices, and you can find some really great things on there. Mm. Now you're not finding. It's hard to find some of the smaller brands, like the more local brands, but um, the uh, they're called classics. The Class Six in Hawaii is probably the best, the best liquor store I've ever been in. And the wine buying there, you're like, and it's in Hawaii, which wine buying is very hard there. It was amazing what you would come across. And it was it was often there. It wasn't like sometimes. So mm-hmm. obviously somebody has a really great job living in Hawaii buying all the liquor and, and wine spirits. Sign yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does this club travel? I'll do, I'll do picks for Hawaii anytime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's move this club to a volcano. I'm totally into it. Oh, this is a volcano whiskey series? Yeah. Will you risk your life? Yes. <laughs> do you have some whiskey? <laughs> but a very like... Pointed, With your pointy Ohana. taste. It feels like it'd be very pointy because it's lava. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the funny thing. So lava has, there are two names for lava in Hawaii. And it's the, the jagged lava is called a'a. And the only reason I remember that is because if you were to walk across, you'd be like, ah, 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 ah. I have no idea what the smooth lava is called. <laughs> Called your your flims are burning, right? Are you supposed to touch lava? I don't even know. Well, the the the, the melted lava or the cooled lava. Oh, I guess. cooled the rocks. Yeah, lava rocks. Lava I, think, rocks. I think you're onto something though, because Tennessee is known for their charcoal filtering of all their whiskey, right? So like Jack Daniels, that's what yeah. they're really known for. What if we did one out there that filtered through the lava rock? Yeah, we might know uh, a few people out there. I mean, I'm kind of into that. Uh, like, that's what Garrett's doing right now. He's lava filtering his stuff. No, but he is making whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I'm like, he is. Well, he's yeah. It's uh, Garrett Marrero who owns Maui Brewing mm, is mm-hmm. distilling now, and I know he started distilling a couple years ago. I don't know if whiskey's ever been released yet, but I know he's doing gin because he sent us the gin. Um, obviously, the clear spirits first to come, but yeah, uh, that sounds like a good plan. Oof. Yeah, today just got interesting. I went from like whatever to like maybe I just maybe I'm gonna follow the old rule of like the 1900s. Just have like a quarter shot of whiskey and move on with your day. There you go. <laughs> it's that or your gummy bear, right? <laughs> fix, no, fix whatever ails you. Yeah, uh, ale with ale. All right, do we have one more? Should we yeah, do that? Yeah, sure. Yet? So this was actually our first pick. This is a rye out of Wilderness Trail. This so is good. four years and nine months. Um, so Wilderness Trail is an interesting one. These guys actually were big into yeast. So the the fourth kind of, comp- well, one of many components of whiskey making is going to be the yeast. And so they did different yeast strains that then they sold to other distilleries and then kind of decided, well, this looks fun. Like we should make our own whiskey. And I'm sure they had, you know, a business plan and weren't like, this is just fun. Uh, but so they kind of came out. And, you know, what I like about these craft whiskeys that we're dealing with today, you know, they all waited patiently for their products to hit kind of the four-year mark before taking them to market. Um, You know, you can have a lot of younger whiskeys that maybe will mix great in cocktails. But I think, in my opinion, in order to kind of be best served neat, four years is kind of the the benchmark, right? The the whole bottled and bond law was like the first truth in advertising law (laughs) was actually uh, around whiskey. And so bottled and bond means four years, exactly 100 proof. These are obviously more than that. But that four year mark to me is just kind of where things can really start to take off. Oh, that's very interesting. I like everything they do. I just like wilderness trail. Mm -hmm. I like the ride, delish. Yeah, so it's a, to me, it's less bubblegum and fruity um, than what we were experiencing with the Starlight one. It's a little yeah. bit like richer, a little deeper. So good. It it's, feels bright compared to the others. I mean, I don't know okay. how else, like for me, anyway, mm-hmm. and I'm not a whiskey drinker. And it's hotter. So it is hot. Yeah. yeah. No, it's hotter and it doesn't taste hotter. Doesn't that, it doesn't drink hotter. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, I misunderstood what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't drink, it doesn't drink like, that's what I like about, so, finesse. Yeah. I know people talk about finesse, like, why does, this, this is the exact same drink, like, uh, old fashioned. It's made by you, me, and it's gonna be different. Yep. It's all the finesse. Same thing with making um, whiskey, booze. It's the distiller, it's that finesse, it's that final touch, it's that, when do they cut it? Do you find that, 
with the, it seems like there's a lot of people jump, who recently jumped in the game of distilling, a lot of new distillers. Do you, do you feel that, do you see that that finesse is being lost or is it, or is it even more so? Did, so, it, did it change, how did it change the game? I guess that's what I'm trying to ask I you. I mean, we don't even have half the amount of distillers that we had prior to prohibition in this country. Right? Everybody yeah. and their mother made booze. Yeah. So I feel like, I don't know. I feel like we lost a lot of time during Prohibition, like really sure. honing in our craft. Yeah. And I think they were getting better at making whiskey. And I think that, like, if people were always like, oh, but, you know, bourbon was made here. I'm like, but, you know, it came from, like, the idea of making, you know, scotch and, you know, and distilling what was available. And I don't think we've hit our peak yet. Our country's really young still. Yeah. And... You know, technology is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a little bit of a beast because it can tell you when it's perfect, but it can't tell you when it's humanly perfect. You can't, humanly imperfect, even you can't making take it perfect, the, you, right? You, you, can't autom- you can't make it. You can't make, everything cannot be 100% done by a computer. It's just not possible. You know, it's like I don't eat electricity, right, like a computer does. So I can't, a computer can't tell me that this is when it's perfect. Yes, yeah, scientifically, Sure, this, the bloom is perfect, the peak is perfect, and this is perfect. And, this, and together, it should technically make sense. But, you know, you cook, right? So many times you adjust a recipe that you made a million times with just a little bit more salt or whatever based on imperfections. Or you turn the, flame, the, the temp all the way up and leave your house for four and a half hours. Yeah, or you, or you set your house on fire. Almost. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. No, but you know what I mean? Is that yeah. crazy to say? Sorry. I didn't no, mean it is. Yeah. That's why I was just wondering, like, with more people being introduced to the space with new distillers, are you seeing more innovation? Are you seeing um, the loss of, of, of craft? Because some are some people getting in? I, I'm sure they are. I'm sure there's plenty of people getting in for different reasons. Yes. Obviously, some being more financially driven mm-hmm. and maybe losing what Gino is saying is the finesse. And I was just wondering what you guys felt like overall. Yeah, I mean, I think... Honestly, as, as a whiskey drinker, I think the more people in the market, the better, right? You can yeah, try different things. You know, obviously we're here talking about some single barrels, but I think what the bigger trend I've started to see is more emphasis and uh, kind of credit given to blenders. So mm. for a while, like blended whiskey was seen as this like nasty thing and you didn't know what was in it. But now you're seeing some brands come out that are really kind of pegging their future on being really good at taking a barrel from here, a barrel from there, two barrels from there, blending it together to make something really unique. And I, it, that's not frowned upon in the market anymore. I met a, quite a few years ago, living in Hawaii, went to San Francisco with a friend um, on the, and with a recommend, which, uh, the master Sam made our list for us and made all the contacts for us to go to in, mm-hmm. out. It, it was not a bad deal, right? Very nice, very great time, uh, really fun time. And I met a um, his name's Ed Shear, and he makes Ed Shear wines, very small, you know, small farm um, or winemaker. And that's what his his claim to fame was. He could blend, mm-hmm. and it, he just it was really interesting to be. And it was just the three of us or the four of us and Fred and him talking about he's super introverted telling us his his method of blending and he just had this and it was amazing his skills and you, to that point blended wine can be like a mm, right his wines were lovely yes. were so lovely yep yes I think that's Hard such a get. skill something I cannot I mean we've played around with like okay let's try this some people will do what they call an infinity bottle so you know save an ounce of oh. every bottle that they have put it in a decanter just kind of write down what it is and yeah. then be like all right, sometimes it's great, and sometimes it is gag-inducing. Yeah. So <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Oh, that's funny. Um, that's actually true. Um, Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. Had, had those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, blend. yes. Harvey yes. Fry. Yep. Rest in peace, Harvey. So we are going to do a crazy thing, speaking of an infinity bottle. I'm going to take your wilderness rye. I am going to put a little bit of fireball in it. Oh my goodness. I know, it's terrible. And then I'm going to finish it with milk that was soaked with um, Nutter Butters. Ooh. Okay then, this yes. sounds totally crazy and so, totally yes. perfect for the season. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so I was just gonna say, so what do you have lying around the house for the season, right? You have cookies, things people brought you, blah, blah, blah. You're not gonna sit around and eat all the cookies, right? But you can make a fucking delicious bourbon milk punch. This sounds crazy. So all you need to do is legitimately take the milk, get your favorite cookie, your leftover cookie. Just don't, don't do chocolate. Yeah. Don't do, actually not true. If it's a baked chocolate cookie, like a, um, an Oreo type, yeah. 
That's fine. Don't dip chocolate. Yeah. Okay? okay. Dip chocolate. This doesn't work. Is a no go. Okay. Although now I want to try this with Italian jelly cookies from New York. <laughs> so I'm, I'll be doing that next. All right. So what you're going to do is very, very simple. You're basically making a classic milk punch. So it would be uh, three ounces of milk per every two ounces of rye. And then we are going to add just a touch of Fireball. Crazy Sounds so ridiculous. But guess who makes Fireball? Heaven Hill. So how bad is Fireball really? Um... Is everything in your toes just wiggling? Like, because you can't believe I'm about to do uh, this? I'm excited to try it. I can use your whiskey. Yes, of course. Okay. Of so course. we're going to do two ounces of the wilderness rye. And then we're going to take a quarter ounce. It's basically a table, a, a bar spoon of Fireball. Now, the reason why is because Fireball used the right way is actually very good. My nieces and, and my younger um, clientele, they love shots. Yeah. Secretly at one o'clock in the morning, I will totally take shots of Fireball. <laughs> and then people say, Gina, did you just drink Fireball? I'm like, no. And the answer no. is yes. All right, so we're gonna add three ounces of our milk. So like, how long did you let the Nutter Butters sit in the milk? About, I don't know, about an hour, two hours. Okay, I'm assuming whole milk? Um, yeah, you could use that cream, whatever, whatever you like. Okay. You could use coconut milk, almond milk. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying not to get the, um, I don't want the Nutter Butters in there because it's going to make it really mealy. And that's not what I want. Ooh. But then, don't you want to eat that secretly? I do. Kinda. I so do. Don't you secretly want to eat this and then maybe have an edible? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. You're going to do what I want. I've never actually poured from a Nutter Butter container just so we're all clear. <laughs> but she makes it look easy, right? doesn't she? I know. Done this dozens of times. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just tell you honestly, I did it like a long time ago, I did a cereal milk cocktail based on like the cereal milk um, cake, right? Yeah. I was like, I always like loved it. I was always like, oh, it's so good. And I kind of got away from all of that. You know, I was like, oh, I'm just not going to do that anymore because just because I'm not. And I was in the um, I was in the grocery store with my kids and they fucking begged me for these bullshit cups of cookies. And I'm like... I didn't know they came in cups. You don't have kids. I don't. So, begged me for these cups of cookies and I'm like, we're not getting the cookie cups. Okay? We're just not getting cookie cups. Stop asking me for them. And all of a sudden it dawns on me one day. I was like, I can use a cookie cup <laughs> to steep the milk. And everyone can have their own version of what they like, really. This can shake or 10 sucks. All right, anyway. So, what's the best thing about Bailey's? Do you know? It goes um, well in coffee. Yeah, it does oh. go well in coffee. It smells good. So, oh, yeah, it so does. That's what you like about it. Yeah, the smell. You don't like You're right. necessarily the Bailey's itself. You like the aroma of Bailey's. And you like the fact that it's sweetened. So, if you can make this aroma, non-alcoholic, you'd actually taste that same taste without the alcohol effects. Isn't that crazy? Huh. Anyway, so let's finish up this drink. So we put all those things in there. And then we're going to take our ice, crushed ice, to the top, rocks glass, pour it over the top. Notice that we did not put any. We're doing, we're doing our holiday drinks, right? This, yes. This is all ho holiday. You do not put water in cream drinks. You just get it in there. And that's it. And if you get a little bit of cookie, oh well. So how do you feel about like if you had more time than you knew what to do with like a rim of crusted Nutter Butters? Um, Is that too mealy. much? Mealy. Mealy, okay. <laughs> I don't like the mealiness. Like I don't like um, like thank food you. in thank my you drink. so much. Does that make sense? Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. All right, I have an exception to that. I have an exception to the milk, uh, food and drinks. I fucking love blue cheese in martinis. Oh, mm. all the time. Oh, this is... Okay, this doesn't taste like nut or butter. Like, no. it's not like anything you would. Mm -mm. But you but could you... easily serve it for dessert instead of like making a pie or Absolutely. any of that stuff. What did you think it was going to taste like? I didn't know. I had no idea. This milk is good, right? I don't taste the um, the fireball. Mm -mm. No. That's the cinnamon. Like yeah. the flavor you're tasting? That's the, the, it. The, on the finish. Yeah. Huh. Like the peanut butter is like super subtle. I love it. So, and it, those are dangerous. You can make, so here's the a, here's a beauty also when you make things like this. If you take this and you add a little bit of lemon juice to it, you can um, put it in like in a larger vat 
you want to make a whole bunch of this and like give it as a gift, you would add like about an ounce of lemon juice per like every six cocktails. And then you'd let it sit and then you'd strain all that off. It would get like a little chunky. And then you could give it to everybody as like a, um, a milk punch and age it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. You wow. Need, yeah. So we were terrified that I was going to do with the wilderness. I was like, oh, I'll just I'm gonna pour cookies on it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> this is my idea of holiday. Like, yeah. let's just drink and, um, and be merry. Absolutely. Anyway. So where are they going to go to get this recipe? You're going to go to Designated Drink Not Show to learn how to become a cookie thief. And, <laughs> and a whiskey in, thief. <laughs> and use it into your cocktails. And also how to steal whiskey from barrels in a Rick house. <laughs> Again, you're going to go to Designated Drink Not Show. And then we will also give you the link to Brian's Club. Yeah. How to be involved or not be involved or how to be or a, just find a out voyeur, a voyeur yeah. of his club on Instagram, right? Oh, yeah. Insta yes. and That's TikTok. Right. Brian's all over it, man. Oh, God, that TikTok thing. It is a rabbit hole you do not want to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, it's 2 in the morning. You're like, what the hell? Do you have yes. any dance videos on TikTok? Have you had too much whiskey? And you've been, like, dancing around. And you're like, this whiskey is delicious. <laughs> like, I've, had a, doing, I've had a personal prohibition on dancing for, like, 10 years. And right side, it's, you start doing this with your whiskey bottle. I'm like, that's TikTok. Yes. I have some serious kid issues right now. <laughs> 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 They're like, Mom, do you want to do this thing? And you're like, no, I don't want to do this and I know the whole dance it's terrifying and you've not done it you which are, are they out there and I just don't know it oh, I don't know I do drink a lot I live on a fucking farm <laughs> Maybe I drink a lot with your chickens chickens <laughs> kids ducks I have I, I do have sheep a sheep dog who's listen, cute as pie I do have a nice you know ensemble at my house as well yes of so, course you do so people are like you know they come over they're like oh this is nice and I'm like that's not it and then they go downstairs and they're like oh my god I'm like she the, didn't let me go downstairs for I'm, some reason. <laughs> I have the opens upstairs and the to-be-open later ones downstairs. And then the decanters for, like, old fashions and Manhattans so that, you know, people don't stumble upon 120 proofs accidentally. Yes. <laughs> Hundred, like, um, so my house was built in 1767, so I have a traditional root cellar that there's only bourbon and mm -hmm. wine and stuff in. Yeah. And for some reason, she didn't let me go down there. It's super I have no idea why that would be. <laughs> and all my champagnes and bourbons are together. Mm -hmm. right? So everything's like A, B, C, C. So the dog. Okay. champagne. Nice. She's like, stay yeah. upstairs with the dog, Louise. You're here, you're here to take care of the dog. I'm like, no, yes, ma'am. No. <laughs> you uh, wish it was that good. No. All right. I never go thirsty with Gina, no. let's be honest. I love everything you're doing. This is great. Oh, I thanks might, so much I might, for I want to sneak into this club, I think. Please do. I'm not that far. How far from you are you from, um, the, from Luckett's? Uh, probably 25, 30, 30 minutes. Oh, that, Lyon County is that big? Yes. Yeah, and we're like on the very cusp of, I've, sadly, I've been out there four years and I know where nothing is. I know how to get to work. I know how to get groceries. I know the <laughs> parks for the kids and that's about it. <laughs> Did you live in the city before that? We were in Arlington. In Arlington. Yeah, for quite a while and then had our first kid, moved out and then it's all been all kids all the time since. So the, that's the, the end. The whiskey is a nice little respite from that. <laughs> I understand that. Yes. That's right. I, I, live, I live in your world in Maryland. Yeah. All right. I think this is it. Okay. It's all you. All right. So in this day and age, everybody identifies themselves with a spirit animal. And it's being that you moved to Loudoun County, maybe that you're really into Arabian horses. And you're like, <laughs> this is my, my, my thing. And I want to race them. And they're beautiful. And, and it's like me or, or a thoroughbred or something. If you can identify yourself as one spirited ingredient, what would it be and why? It could be for food or beverage. One ingredient that describes your spirit. I'm gonna go with corn. Because oh. corn is super versatile. You can eat it, you can feed animals with it, you can make whiskey <laughs> out of it. And so, I don't know, I feel like I know a little bit about a lot of things. And so corn is, you know, a little bit of it and a lot of different things. I, I like it. It's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a kernel of knowledge. Oh, jeez. Oh, You're so punny. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. It just popped into your head. It did. <laughs> <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm fine. But on that note, folks, don't do 116 proof <laughs> tasting while you, know, you have not much eating. more to do. Yeah, yeah, and not eating. Without water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, drink more water. On that note, happy holidays, Brian. Happy so holidays. Good to Cheers. Have Thanks you. so much for having me. This is great. And don't forget, we want to hear what you have to say. So go do the survey.
Yes, yes, I know. I made it rhyme. I'm such a dork. We all already knew that. But anyway, head over to designateddrinker.show, take the survey, and let's hang out at our live virtual Let's Get Twisted Cocktail Hour. Cheers to that. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a podcast media company that is dedicated to connecting people to intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Also in the Missing Link lineup of podcasts is Roger That, a podcast dedicated to guiding you through the haze of dementia, led by skilled caregivers Bobby and Mike Carducci. Now, if you're looking for a whole new way to enjoy the theater, check out Between Acts, an immersive audio theater podcast experience. Each episode takes you on a spellbinding journey through the works of newfound playwrights, from dramas to comedies and everything in between. Find Missing Link's League of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please don't forget to subscribe, download, and review the shows. Your review helps our shows reach new audiences. To find out more about Missing Link, visit missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.